session and it has gone by so fast. So really quickly before I actually start going into any other material, first things first, I just wanted to remind you all that um, I am still currently working on your informative speeches. They will all be graded hopefully by Sunday. So you should have all of that graded by Sunday. You should have my feedback on your video and on your outline by Sunday the latest. So that's that. Um, next thing that I wanted to talk about is that for next week, you actually have two things to do. You have your persuasive speech video and outline due as well as your final exam. So next Friday at 11.59 p.m., it is the last time that you can submit your assignments for the semester. After that, I will be working on grades. Hopefully your grades will be uh, submitted the latest by the following Wednesday which I believe the following Wednesday is the 16th. So I will have your grades done the latest by the 16th. As you all know, we do, for those of you who are enrolled in summer session, summer session does begin on the 21st. So I just wanted to get things, you know, rolling quickly so that by the time that we start our, um, that we start our summer session, you have everything done. I believe summer session begins on the 21st or the 22nd, I could be mistaken, but it, we only have a week off between the end of next week um, and the beginning of the, the end of next week and then the beginning of summer session, we have one week off. So that's the first thing that I wanted to say. So make sure that you submit um, all that it is that you have to submit, your video, your final, anything that you have talked to me about asking for like extra time or anything like that, make sure to submit it by next uh, Friday at 11, 59 p.m. Okay, so next thing that I wanted to talk about is I wanted to talk about just really quickly, um, kind of like go over your persuasive speech. You have been reading this week about the persuasive speech. You know what persuasion is, what is expected of you and all that. Um, but I quickly wanted to go over um, the, outline, the outline template that you will be using for this particular speech, as well as the rubrics that I will be using to grade your speech for the following week. So really quickly, let me share the screen with you all. Let me quickly share the screen and this is what it looks like. So if you go to the bottom of our class, um, this is the week that we are on. It talks, I have a mini lecture on persuasion, what it is. Um, we also have Aristotle's proofs, all of that, that's gonna be really helpful. So we have here the problem cause solution pattern. So this is what basically you are going to be using to, um, to kind of like organize your speech. So for the pattern, you're gonna have, again, you're gonna have your introduction and conclusion like you usually have for all of your other speeches. So in your introduction, you are going to have your attention grabber, uh, your specific purpose. You're going to have your credibility statement and your preview of main points and the order that they're going to be discussed in the, um, in the speech. So that's your in introduction. Then you'll have a transitional sentence that will bring you into your first main point, which is your problem, which is right here. Um, and that main point, you're going to be discussing what the problem is that you're addressing. Um, you have to provide evidence uh, that the problem exists. So any articles that you can find that kind of like support uh, the, you know, the, the importance of the problem, the necessity for us to address the problem, that any of that will be helpful for this. Um, your second main point is going to be the causes. The causes are basically what kind of like brought the problem about. So if we're talking about homelessness and that's the problem that you are discussing for your persuasive speech, what brought homelessness about? So you're going to list at least a minimum of two causes uh, to let us know like two things that kind of like brought the problem of homelessness um, about. Lastly, your third main point is going to be your solution. In your third main point, you're going to um, offer a solution that kind of like would solve the problem. You can choose a solution that you have found in your research, or you can come up with your own solution, regardless of what you, you if you will, whether you choose to do your own solution or you decide to use a solution that you have previously found, you have to find some type of like research or sources that back up the idea that that solution is possible. Um, and if you are making up your own solution, but you're basing it off of something else that you have seen has worked for another problem, you can use that source uh, backing up the, the, like, you know, the support or backing up the fact that the, so the solution that you're providing is possible. So this is what um, it's going to be looking at. Again, like I said, your introduction, your conclusion are going to remain exactly the same. You only will have three main points for your speech and those three main points are going to be number one problem, number two causes, and number three solutions. You only have three main points besides the introduction and the conclusion. 
Now, if all of you are wondering, well, this seems like a little confusing, how am I gonna put this together? Well, I have hooked it up for you. So I have provided you with a template um, of your problem call solution. So it looks very similar to the previous speeches, um, to the other outline that I have provided you for previous speeches. But this one kind of like details the three main points that you need, the body, of the statement of the problem, which is your first main point, the second main point, the causes, and the third main point, the solution and what you need to answer here. So as you can see, I have been very detailed as to what questions I need you to answer in which one of the main points. So in the first main point, um, I need you to answer that the problem exists, that the problem is significant, that the problem is harmful. Again, it's divided into three sub points, but you don't necessarily have to divide it up like that. You can answer it in a couple of sub points and one sub points and then offer support. Uh, the key fact of this is that anytime that you are offering an argument or you are trying to persuade someone or prove a point, you always have to have evidence that's credible that backs it up. So you don't have to have like divide it up like this and provide a piece of evidence after every single one. These are just the questions that I want you to answer within that first main point. Then you're going to have a transitional sentence and then you're going to look at the causes of the problem, which is your second main point. So in the causes of the problem, it says here that you can go up to three causes. I just need you a minimum of two. You have to have at least two. If you wanna have more, that is ultimately up to you and the time that you have for your speech. Um, so I just need you to use two sources. You're going to tell us right here what the cause is, and then you're going to provide evidence that that cause is actually something that's that you didn't just make up, that you actually found proof for. Lastly, you're gonna do transitional sentence and in your three, third main point, you're going to tell us how the solution will work. So basically you tell us what the solution is, how is the plan to be implemented? So for example, if you are talking about homelessness and you are saying that uh, we need to use all the abandoned buildings or buildings that are no, no longer used to house homeless people, how will that work out? Where will we get the money for? Um, you know, you kind of have to detail it, not thoroughly detailed, but give us as, as much details as you possibly can that you have access to so that we get an idea of how this is possible. Then you're going to tell us why the solution is practical. So why is this a solution that works the best? Why is it the most, you know, like approachable, the most easy to put together? And finally, um, tell us why your solution is better than others that have been offered. So for example, um, others that have been offered are like, you know, having more homeless shelters. Why is that solution not something that you support? Why do you support your solution? You're going to kind of like, mention why the other solution hasn't worked and why yours will work better. So as you can see, this template is available for you all. So in case um, you are confused as to how to organize your speech, you should be able to find that template. Um, you should be able to find it um, under next week's uh, module, which is week eight. So you here you have like the um, submission for your assignment and your video. You have the template and I have also provided you with a sample from a previous student that I have. We can quickly look at that. Um, but I did have a student who, um, I did have a student who did a speech. Um, give me one second, I have no idea what's going on. I had a student who did her speech on um, homelessness. And I believe this is a sample that I have provided for you all, but that was a very well done speech. So um, I would highly recommend you looking at the outline and getting like a good idea um, of what it is. No, this is not this is not the homeless one. This is about obesity, which again, it's still a pretty good speech. I mean, it's not um, super perfect or anything like that, but it is a good speech that will allow you to get a good idea. So let me um, quickly share the screen with you, also I can show you what that looks like. So this is a speech. It's the one that talks about obesity. Um, basically, the student did a really good job at dividing all the points up kind of like explaining the causes, the solution and all of that. Um, my only warning in regards to this outline is just make sure that you have your sources cited and that you have your work cited. Um, the student forgot to submit her work cited in a complete packet. So she did offer it to me afterwards through an email, but uh, make sure that you put your in-text citations and your work cited within one document. Now, the last thing that I wanted to quickly talk to you all about before I let you go is three things. So I wanted to talk about the rubrics. And then finally, I wanted to talk about the final exam study guide. Let's get to the rubrics first. And then we can talk about the final exam study guide. 
So let's go to rubrics. And let me show you how I'm going to be creating your um, persuasive speech. Obviously, your persuasive speech is a little bit, um, has way more points than your previous speeches. And this is kind of like the culminating project for the class. So I'm obviously going to be creating it a little bit harsher because you have already had practice through multiple speeches in this class. And this is kind of like you showing me the best that you can do. Um, so let's check the delivery rubric first. So this is like your video. This is what I'm going to be looking at. So the, for the first thing that I'm going to be looking at is the introduction. So basically just having the parts of the introduction, the attention grabber, the credibility statement, um, the preview of main points, the introduction of the topic or your specific purpose. So I'm going to be looking for all of that. Uh, the second that's worth 20 points. The second thing that I'm going to be looking at is for your body paragraphs, making sure that you have clear main points that you have your problem cost solution that you do have transitions in between your three main points. Also that you have oral citations. So like in the previous speech, you had to cite two sources orally and there had to be two different sources, right? So for this speech, you have to cite three different sources orally. So three of the sources that you include in your work site cited or three of the sources that you're using to back up your arguments, you have to cite them orally in your speech. Um, so that's that. Uh, next thing that I'm going to be looking at, that's worth 30 points. Your conclusion is worth 20 points. I want you to review that you talked about, the main points, the topic, and then end up with a call to action. So when I talk to you all, uh, when we were talking about introduction and conclusions, we talk about this idea of a call to action. Call to action is specifically used during persuasive speeches, asking the audience to either change their train of thought, do something, attempt something. So. You have to have some type of like call to action statement at the end of your speech, letting the audience know and stop eating meat or write to your senator or, you know, protest with me or whatever it is that your speech is about. You have to have some type of call to action at the end as a closing uh, statement. So that's worth 20 points. Your delivery is worth 45 points. I want to make sure that you make eye contact, that you are making eye contact with the camera, that you're not reading from in, from your screen where you have your outline. Uh, make sure that you use flashcards and you only use them when you need to use them, not reading from them. Uh, make sure that you are filming yourself standing up, that you I can see your gestures, that I can see you moving around a little bit, that you speak at a normal rate and volume. So if in the past you have gotten comments from me that I can't hear you, try to work on the volume. Like I've said before, record yourself, put your phone at the end of the room, record yourself and then play it back to see if it's loud enough to be heard. Make sure that you have less than 10 vocal fillers and that comes with a lot of practice. So make sure you have less than 10 vocal fillers. And for your speech time limit, this speech is between five to six minutes. So Make sure that you meet, meet the minimum of five minutes and that you not do not exceed going over 30 seconds more than the limit. So if you are at six minutes and 30 seconds, I will still consider that on time. If you do go over that six minute and 30 second mark, I will consider that I will dock points off for being way over time. Your delivery is worth 45 points. The next thing that I will be grading is your overall effectiveness. Overall effectiveness is another way of me saying, how well did you use the speech pattern? Did you follow the problem cost solution pattern? Meaning, did you have a well-established problem? Did you offer at least two causes? Did you explain your solution and how it will work and why it is better than other solutions? So practically, if you follow the samples and the outlines that I have in the the template and the sample that I have provided for you, you should be able to hit all of those points for overall effectiveness. That is 15 points. Last thing that I will be grading for this speech is your visual aid. For the first time in the semester, I will be actually grading your visual aid and how well you use it. So make sure that you have a visual aid. Remember, like try to keep it to a non-technological visual aid. I promise you it is much easier to have either a prop, a picture, or a poster just for the whole online process situation. If we were in a classroom, I will be more than happy to let you use PowerPoint in the classroom. It will be much easier to do so. But since we're in an online environment, it is way, way, way easier to use some type of prop, poster, printout as a visual aid. So make sure that you have your visual aid, that you use it throughout your speech, that you refer to it, that you mention it, that you embed it in your speech somehow. Make sure that your visual aid is not just standing there or just sitting there because that's gonna hinder your speech rather than helping it. And that's gonna be worth 15 points. So your entire persuasive speech delivery is 
worth 145 points, the most amount of points that um, I have assigned for any assignment in this semester. So make sure that you put your very best, that you rehearse, that you put the most amount of work in this speech. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the outline rubric. The outline rubric is pretty standard. It's similar to what have been, how I've been grading your past outlines. So basically for the format, it's out of 30 points. I want to make sure that your outline is in Roman numeral format, that it contains transitions, that it contains a general and specific purpose, and that it has like a really creative title that's worth 30 points. Um, for the sources, I'm going to be looking at that your outline contains a work cited, that your work cited is an MLA format, uh, that you have in-text citations for the three required sources that you have to orally cite. And all of that is uh, adding up to a total of 55 points. So that's how I'm going to be grading your persuasive speech outline. Now, the last thing that I wanted to cover today is I wanted to quickly go over the final exam study guide. As I said at the beginning of our live Zoom session, next week you have your persuasive speech outline and delivery due as well as your final exam. So let me quickly go over the final exam study guide. So again, kind of like the same way in the midterm, if it's not in the final exam study guide, it's not gonna be in the midterm. And I have detailed it here, um, what it is that you need to be looking at. So for your final exam study guide, what we're going to be doing is like, um, you, your, your exam is non-cumulative, meaning that it's not something that we are going to be like reading from the very beginning and I'm gonna be testing you from the very beginning, not at all. It's going to be more so like what wasn't covered on the midterm is what's gonna be covered on the final. So uh, you'll have 25 questions. Each question is worth two points. It will be true or false or multiple choice, kind of like how it was in the midterm. And I have detailed the chapters here that I will be looking at. So the chapters that I'm going to be looking at, looking at our first chapter 16 through 20. Uh, basically, I'm going to be looking at what are the four methods of delivery, uh, what are the aspects of nonverbal delivery that we discuss in class? What are some types of visual aid that you can use? What are some tips and recommendations that you can use when using PowerPoint? Again, all of these things you can either find in the book and on our modules, uh, on our module uh, little lectures that we have there. Next thing, chapter 22, what is informative speaking? How is it different for persuasive speaking? What are some, what are the five different types of informative speeches? What are some tips you can follow for preparing for your speech? Again, you can go back to the informative speech module, uh, our live lecture recording so that you can uh, be able to answer all those questions and you should be able to answer them by using your textbook as well. Next chapter that I'm going to be uh, testing you on is chapter 23, which talks about persuasive speaking. Um, so we're going to be looking at what is a persuasive speak, uh, speech, what are the classical persuasive appeals, be able to give examples, what is Maslow's hierarchy of needs, how does it help in persuasive speaking. So again, all of those are in the module as well as in the textbook. And the final chapter that I'm going to be testing you on is chapter 24. What is an argument? What are its parts? What are the three types of claims that can be argued? And what are some of the fallacies that we can see in persuasive speaking? Again, all of this, I kind of covered a little bit of it on our live lecture from last week. And some of them are, uh, some of those questions are also, um, I just solely on the textbook and in our little like modules. So make sure that you are looking at your module, your notes, my live lecture recording so that you are able to look back, take notes and prepare for the exam. Again, if it's not, if the question is not on this exam, this study guide for the exam is not gonna be on the exam. Um, so just study the study guide, fill it out, print it out, write it down, do what you have to do. And um, you should be able to do well on the exam. And again, those are the last things that we have to do. So the last things that you have to submit are besides the things that are due for this week, the last things that you have to submit are your the things that are due this week, which are your discussion posts nine and 10, and quiz number five is what's due this week. And next week, we have our persuasive speech video presentation, your outline, and your final exam. All of this is due by June 11th, which is next Friday. Remember that after June 11th at 11.59 p.m., our session is officially done. I will be submitting grades after that time. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me way before June 11th at 11.59 p.m. 
Um, and with that being said, that is all that I have to discuss with you today. Um, I hope that you all have a good weekend. Please submit your assignments on time and I will see you next week. I hope you all take care. Wait, these three assignments that are due uh, or are being shown in Lancer Point, those are due today, right? Uh, these, the, for the week seven, yes. So the informative peer reviews, the persuasive topic approval and quiz five, they're, those are due today. Okay, just making sure. Because I don't see the, uh, any June 11th assignments. Are yeah, these are they haven't opened yet. They're going to open, um, I believe they're going to open either tomorrow or Sunday. Oh, okay, perfect. All right, thank you so much. All right, bye everybody. Bye.